Caffeine and Octane is brought to you by Haggerty. Let's drive together. On our show, Caffeine and Octane, in the past, we've always tried to feature prominent voices in the car culture, from a musician to a bishop to a broadcaster. But today we're at a barbershop? Oh, the swag shop. Rap music is my religion. Amen. Killer Mike swag shop. For those of you who don't know, Killer Mike is a Grammy award-winning rapper turned activist. Matter of fact, Killer Mike is one of the most influential voices in the city of Atlanta. And guess what? He loves cars. Hey, what's up, Mike? What's up, brother? How you doing? What's going on, dude? Man. I, I came in, but I didn't see any Killer Mike-ish type cars nah, out there. Nah, we got that cool dad vehicle, but oh, you're in the, dad the cars are at the Villains Garage. We're going to go there later. Welcome to this country five, bona five, and my flow is sweet as a potato pie. First, I need everybody bragging on my barbershop, so I'm going to sit you with my man Marlon today. Oh, you going to get me hooked up? He going to tighten you up. We're going to chop it up a little bit. Let me get ready. I'm, I love this. <laughs> Barbershops is when you find out all the teeth. Uh, uh, I love my granddaddy say, well, they just tell the truth. One of the things that I really admire you, Mike, is how you developed the credibility that you did and had the name Killer Mike. I know, right? <laughs> is beyond me. I didn't give myself the name Killer Mike, so it's not like I thought I was badass, I wanted to be called Killer. You know, I would have been Slick Mike, Cool Mike, <laughs> but I earned my name. I earned my name in a rap battle. Looking for the truth, yeah, it's me. Everything polo to the floor, though, even at the grocery store, though. You know, my name's Michael. Right. Killer Mike's just a rap name. And once people kind of get past that and get to the essence of who this human being I'm dealing with is, it just makes it easier. It hasn't been a problem at all. What I love about you is how influential you are. You're more important to mayors and presidents. I always give credit to my grandparents because they raised me, thankfully, because my mother and father were too young to be having children. Used to walk around with a head full of nap. Kept a young kid with a head full of rest. Doing what he can, just trying to adapt. Jump to the block off my grandma's lap. My grandmother, in particular, was always involved in the communities. So even though I'm part of the most successful touring rap group in the world right now, I never shut off opportunity. To the point where the mayor is going to call you because the city's burning down. Well, where it was happening, if you go a mile left, you in our neighborhood. I didn't think it was smart to burn down your own community when we should be using it as a fort to help people organize. Where'd your love for cars come from? I like, I love cars since I was a kid. I think that, you know, there's a time in a little boy's life where I didn't know what I liked better, the Kimberly Walton who sat next to me in class or my toy car. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know I, I became a rapper and kind of get the best of both worlds. I want to know how many cars you got. I'm rumored to have between 12 and 15 cars. <laughs> um, all my cars primarily are black. I want to be Batman secretly in my head. So <laughs> I think that's why I've done it. And I just bought a brand new garage. I'm actually going to let you finish enjoying the shade wash and groom treatment. And I'll meet you at the garage. Now, I'll be back, Marlon. Appreciate it. I'm going to go see some cars. It. Yes, sir. But, Doug, uh, I'll be back. Oh, Lord. I see they got you swagged up, man. You, you look, do, right? You looking good. Came out good. Yeah, Marlon did his thing. He did his thing, man. Look at look at this. What you got? What you got? Looking at the bezel of my brightness, thinking that I used to sell wraps for enlightenment. This is one of my favorite cars in the world, 61 Impala. Big Boy had it for years. Huh? This was originally Big Boy from Outcast car. Really? He gave it to his uncle. I used to call him and beg him every month, like, sell me the car, sell me the car. He finally sold it to me. And we was talking in the barbershop. Yeah. He said everything is black. This is not, nah, this is my old man this car. <laughs> yeah, this, 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 this is my go to church call, my wife. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. But we got the black ones. Got, Ooh, look the at a Hellcat. I like going really fast. I got a Hellcat as my daily driver. I was spending on average $1,200 a month in rubber. What? Yeah, I was getting a new set a month. For you to have been spending that much a month, you have been heavy on the throttle. I was making more donuts than Krispy Kreme. <laughs> <laughs> I want the trifecta. I have a 68 and a 69 Firebird. So I said, I want the 67. I saw it pop up, and I put it on deposit before I had the rest of the money. I just sent the deposit in, right? I did, I did whatever car got done. <laughs> the same day, Shaquille O'Neal hits me and says, Big Dog. I'm like, what's up? I'm shooting a TV show, Big Dog, and um, I want you to come do the show with me. I got 20 grand for you. What? Are you lying? 
So, you know, what he paid me essentially bought this car. Original engine, all the numbers are matching on this one. This is a matching numbers car? Yeah. Oh, man. Crate motor 396. Look how clean the inside of this baby is. Yeah, man. <laughs> Did you put exhaust on this or this is just I haven't average? tweaked the exhaust at all yet. This sounds good, man. I haven't tweaked the exhaust yet. I like the stairwell though. I like. did, I did do an aftermarket, sir. That's it. I'm a big guy. Yeah, 